All right, you guys, let's talk about quadratic functions and how they're going to appear in the homework. A quadratic function can appear as f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Hopefully you guys re remember this from quadratic equations early on in the semester. Uh, here x is squared. It's not cubed. It's not simply to the first power. So the squaring aspect is what creates the quadratic function. All right, a basic quadratic function, all right, so this goes back to the last exam material, is written as y equals x squared. Let's go through the basic properties or the lingo or the jargon of the basic quadratic function. So the parabola is symmetric to its line of symmetry. This is that dotted blue line you see on the graph. Okay, so if we were to um, cut the parabola in half, it would be the dotted blue line. The axis intersects the parabola at what is known as the vertex. The vertex on the right-hand side of the graph is this yellow dot. The parabola, as we know it, can open up or open down. So it can be a smile or a frown, depending on the, the sign of the leading coefficient, as we'll see. And the vertex is either a maximum or a minimum. And it's great that you're listening to this because you need to build the synonym relationship between vertex and extreme value. All right, so we will learn a formula for the vertex. For those of you going on to business calculus or regular cal calculus, you will find the vertex value by using something called the derivative. But the key is the vertex is the maximum or minimum value of the parabola. All right, so let's talk about the vertex form. All right, here is the standard vertex form. It is not written in that form ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, we see an a, we see an h, we see a k. So let's talk about what these letters mean. The vertex is the ordered pair h, k. All right, again, that is a coordinate. And h is the x-coordinate, k is the y-coordinate of the maximum or minimum of our parabola. The axis of symmetry is x equals h. That's the vertical line that cuts the parabola in half. h is the horizontal translation of the basic function y equals x squared, k is the vertical translation, and a is the stretching or shrinking power. It is what makes the graph narrower or wider. If a is positive, the graph opens up, meaning it's a smile, and if a is negative, the graph opens down, meaning it's a frown or upside down u. All right, let's take a look at this. If A is positive, again, the graph opens up, as we can see on the left. And on the right, we can see if A is negative, the graph opens down. So just reminding you of either the smile or the frown, depending on the sign of that A. All right, so let's graph this function. Let's plot the points. All right, so I'm just going to plug in some x's, as you can see by the table, and I'm going to get some function values. And I'm simply going to plot this parabola, okay? And I see its domain and I see its range. All right, you guys, I want to talk a little bit about the range, okay? Notice how it is the minimum value of the parabola to positive infinity, all right? It is always going to be the minimum value to positive infinity unless the parabola is upside down. If the parabola is a frown, then it's, the range is always going to be negative infinity to the maximum value. All right, let's take a look at this function. Okay, so what are the transformations? Let's graph this using our knowledge from the last exam of transformations of x squared. All right, we have a negative out in front, which means our parabola is going to be upside down. It's going to flip over the x-axis. We have a minus 4 horizontal translation, which means x squared moves to the right four units. And we have a plus 3, which says our parabola, parabola moves up 3. 
So let's take a look at this graph. Do we in fact see that? Yes, and on this one I'm going to grab my pen, and you can see how this point right here at the origin of our basic function moved to the right 4, it moved up 3, and the parabola itself flipped upside down. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about our vertex form here. If we are given the standard form, standard or general form being this ax squared, oops, let me go back, ax squared plus bx plus c, can we find the vertex simply or the maximum or minimum value simply? And the answer is yes, okay? H is going to be defined as negative b over 2a, and the actual y value for the max or min or the vertex is going to be plugging that negative b over 2a into our function. So let's go through an example actually talking about that. Let's graph this function, x squared minus 6x plus 7. I'm going to use my vertex formula, okay? I'm going to use negative b over 2a. I'm going to find that number, and then I'm going to plug it into this parabola. So I take negative b over 2a, and I have the negative out in front, and in the numerator I have negative 6 in the denominator 2. And what I get in, evalu in evaluating that is a positive 3. Now to get the y value of the vertex, I need to take 3, plug it into my parabola, and I get a y value of negative 2. Thus, I have a vertex of 3, negative 2, Okay, and in this example, I'm going to write my quadratic function in vertex form. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about general graphs of quadratic functions. The graph of f has the following characteristics. It's a parabola with the vertex hk and a axis of symmetry of x equals h. It opens up if the leading coefficient is positive it's going to be a frown if the leading coefficient is negative. It's wider if our leading coefficient is less than 1, and it's going to be narrower if our leading coefficient is greater than 1. The y-intercept is always going to be our constant of c. Okay, If the discriminant is positive, so you guys hopefully remember this from our first exam, if the discriminant, or b squared minus 4ac, is greater than 0, then we can get two real x-intercepts, and we'll use the quadratic formula to get them. If the discriminant, or bx squared, b squared minus 4ac is 0, the x-intercepts are going to be simply one x-intercept, and it's going to be negative b over 2a, or the vertex, or the x-coordinate of the vertex, I should say. And if the discriminant is less than 0, meaning what's under the square root is negative, there are no real x-intercepts, because we're only going to get imaginary numbers. All right, let's use the vertex formula. Find the axis and vertex of the parabola having this equation f of x equals 2x squared plus 4x plus 5. All right, I have an a equals 2, a b equals 4, and a c equals 5. The axis of the parabola is the vertical line x equals h. All right, I can get h, that's negative b over 2a, all right, or negative 4 over 2 times 2, which is negative 1. All right, so my axis of symmetry is at the x value negative 1. That's the vertical line that cuts my parabola in half. All right, I can take negative 1 and plug it into my function to get the entire coordinate of the vertex. So I plug negative 1 in, and I get the value 3. So my vertex is at negative 1, 3. Okay, and let me go back to that for a second before we move on to the next problem. So again, I use h to get the axis of symmetry, and then I take this x value, I plug it into my function or my parabola, I get the y value, 
And from here, I have the coordinates for my vertex. All right, let's talk about how this comes up in the real world. Okay, so our profit function for our I Love Math t-shirt is given by the following. Where does the maximum profit occur? All right, so oftentimes in the real world, we want to find our maximum value, or our minimum value. All right, how are we going to do that? All right, so from this quadratic, I know my A, which is negative 15. I know my B, which is 600. So I can use my vertex formula of negative 600 over 2 times negative 15, and I get 20. All right, what does 20 mean, guys? We're not going to create a PowerPoint slide with, hey, no worries, x equals 20. That doesn't mean anything to us. Okay, our maximum profit occurs at 20 t-shirts. So if we make this t-shirt of I Love Math and sell them, then we're going to maximize the money we can take to the bank if we sell 20 t-shirts. Okay, this is our goal. 